Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about what can you add to your window cleaning company. So if you're new and you have nothing to add to, you'll learn a lot. And if you got something to add to, like a window cleaning company, well, stay tuned either way to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. That intro sucked, I'm sorry. But either way, if it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully you will dig it. You'll watch a bunch of episodes. Binge away. By the way, I believe there's going to be a new Binge Master coming out very, very shortly. Uh, On a drive to go meet his family, he's got like, you know, 10 straight hours of listening. So super crazy. Binge away. We have 230 plus episodes to watch or listen to anywhere podcasts are and, of course, on YouTube. Also... If you are one of the cool kids, you're one of the people who watch every episode, you've been with me forever, you're loyal as all can be, but more importantly, you buy your supplies through me, shameless plug, well, thank you. It is because of you that I get a name brand turkey for Thanksgiving. So thank you very much for everybody who buys through me. Like I said, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com, a window cleaning resource. And that's how I make my cheddar, is putting in orders. So if you have any order you want me to put it in, you can tell me over the phone what you want. Put it all in your cart. Shoot me a text at 862-312-2026 and just be like, yo, Jersey, put it all in. And I would love that. That's like an awesome virtual high five. Really. Uh, People who always let me put orders in, uh, it's ridiculously amazing. So thank you for all of you. And I want to be your rep too. So if you haven't used me yet, use me for that and have me put your supply order in if you also have not seen this this is your first time did you know that there's a magazine called the american window cleaner magazine yeah the american window cleaner magazine the best greatest magazine that i've ever owned for window cleaning uh on the planet but uh also uh shameless plug for that if you haven't gotten your subscription yet please do i want all window cleaners to have a subscription to the magazine They get stickers, obviously, all behind me. Plus, the magazine is absolutely amazing. Such good articles, such uh, diversity in the journalists. There's pictures, posters, new uh, products, giveaways, all that stuff. So check out awcmag.com. Get the subscription. If you haven't yet, and you're a cool kid, and you want to be an epic cool kid, go get it. I know a lot of you are listening, and you don't have a subscription yet. I know who you are. Uh, Go get the subscription if you haven't yet. That would be absolutely amazing. Okay. On to the show. Uh, Today we are talking about what you can add to your window cleaning company. Now, every one of us who's done a window cleaning company or started a business, there's a big thing. You don't want to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. But there are always things you can add to your company. You may not be doing now. You may not be using now. You just may not have right now. Uh, So there's a lot of things out there. We can always improve on our companies. There's not one person ever that has an absolutely perfect business. Maybe from the outside, you're like, oh man, this dude's making cheddar. He's got like people work. It just works out really amazing. He's got a great company, but there's still things he could probably improve on. Always be improving. That's not really like a phrase, but it should be always be improving. Well, this is a few things that we can add to our uh, business. And I'm going to start off right away because the things that you think I'm going to be talking about right now is going to be add-ons, right? You think I'm going to be telling you like what services I am. This is just a segment, just a section of what you can add to your window cleaning company because there's a lot of companies out there who are still doing just window cleaning. But there's so many add-on services that work really, really well, like screen repair, like gutter cleaning, like uh, pressure washing, house washing falls under that, that type of thing. You can even get into roof cleaning, which I love roof cleaning. But those are all paired services under that kind of exterior cleaning service type thing. That umbrella makes it so that you're not too far away, but it brings in more money per ticket. The nice thing with add-ons that a lot of people don't really get when when they don't have it, I guess, they don't understand it, is that you're increasing the number of, uh, the amount of money you're making per ticket, really. So think about this. Say last year you had, you know, a thousand jobs. 100 jobs, it doesn't matter. Imagine now if out of those 100 jobs, 
every single one of them increased their bill by a hundred bucks because they added some more services on. That is huge. That's a huge chunk of money you're just leaving on the table. And the other side of it that's a negative that a lot of people don't really uh, realize maybe is that if you don't do the add-ons, they'll find a company who does the add-ons, right? So if you don't do pressure washing, they'll say, hey, I don't need the window. Hold on right real quick on the windows. I'm going to get a pressure washer into the house washing, and then I'll call you for the windows. I got to schedule them together. Well, what if they find a pressure washing company that does window cleaning? Well, now you're kind of stuck because now they're like, well, I like this dude over here at XYZ window cleaning, but this guy does it all. I only have one bill then. I only have to worry about one bill and it gets all done at the same time. You're actually not just losing money by not offering it. You're losing jobs potentially. So super, super important. Uh, one thing that I really do like is screen repair. Well, let me rephrase that. I hate screen repair. <laughs> I hate doing it. Uh, I hate the act of it. It should be so simple and it frustrates me because not always are my screens perfect. It makes me so mad. By the way, if you have a tip or trick on how to screen repair, go to YouTube, find this video and comment on how you get away with screen repair. How do you make it amazing? I had screening tables. I just make it, it just, it frustrates me. But what we do is we take the screens with us. So what's nice is you're already at the job. Uh, if you're running text or cruise like I do or did, then the nice thing is, is they see the screens. They're always trying to upsell like, hey, um, you know, I see your screens are a little bit faded. Did you want us to go ahead and ref refurb all of them, put all new screens in when you bring them back? They take it with them in the truck and then we go back, fix them in our shop, then we return them. The thing with that is we can do it. We always give them a week or two for up to 14 day window to give us the time, but then they get done at the office. So anytime there's free time or rain day or anything, they can get done. It's really, really nice. It's nice to add in. And our screen prices start at about 30 bucks per screen. Screening is cheap, really cheap. And you can rock out a ton of screens. One thing a lot of people may not understand or do, they may not offer the screen repair. But I do a lot of houses every single year who just have all the screens redone. You're talking 20 screens at 30 bucks a piece. That's a big chunk of money. It's just a really nice, simple add-on. I also hate gutter cleaning, but guess what? A lot of times we have ladders on the trucks. We already got ladders there. People already ask us, right? Why not offer it? You make a lot of good money uh, in gutter cleaning, uh, as gross as it is and, and mucky it is. But another great add-on. Right? You don't necessarily have to do add-ons that are the big ones, like taking out a whole other pressure washing thing or roof cleaning, having all the SH and everything that goes along with that. If you're not ready for that, I understand. But there are other add-ons you can do that uh, allow you to increase tickets, values of every job that you're doing, and add it on. So don't get too far away. Don't offer window cleaning, but then also do like, you know, uh, lawn care or, um, you know, I don't know vehicle detailing or something that's out of the realm where you can kind of lump it all together when it comes to advertising remember we've talked about this a hundred times but when it comes to advertising don't advertise everything you do advertise the main things you do so that you can get them in and then upsell them on everything else that's why it's an add-on you add it on to services right another thing that you can add to your window cleaning company and i would say probably the number one thing on this list the number one thing, in my opinion, is SEO. Now, I know. I talk about Justin Monk, Monk SEO all the time. I get that. They're awesome. I like them. But no matter what or who is being used, you need to have SEO on a website. A lot of you send uh, some awesome websites to me. Say, hey, look this over. Give me some suggestions. By the way, if you ever do that and you send me your website, I will always only tell you negatives. Always. Like, you don't need pats on your back. Like, if something's great, okay. It doesn't help you any if I'm like, it's good, everything is good, you're great. I will find negatives. Even if I can't find them, I will make stretches to try to find the negatives just so you could have something to fix or change, right? So if you do send me your website through like text or something, don't be mad. That's what I do every single time. But SEO companies, a good, good SEO company will change your world. 
And a lot of us don't have SEO companies. A lot of us who have websites spend a bunch of time making a website we think is awesome, which, by the way, you should have a great website that is universally awesome, right? And then we're like, all right, put it out there. It's like having a restaurant with no sign. No one's coming to your restaurant unless they know it's there, right? SEO is letting people find your website. SEO is so, by the way, search engine optimization is what it stands for, but it is absolutely the most important thing for your website. I would rather you see you have a below average website, but amazing SEO because it still gets into people. Everyone, everyone, little old ladies to young people are all using the internet to find your company. The phone book's dead. I'll tell you right now, send your angry emails, but the phone book is dead. Don't advertise in the phone book. It's absolutely horrible. It is the worst investment. The last time I did the phone book, we were spending 280 something dollars a month and we got one job all year for $149 out of the phone book. That's a huge loss in SEO, or uh, not SEO, advertising. ROI, ROI. But anyway, SEO helps your website get found, helps you get found. I've had companies do SEO work that suck. So very, very much beware. That's why I bring up Monk. Monk did, he's done amazing stuff for me. But any company that you have, the problem is, this is why you you talk to people who have had somebody do it, is a company who does SEO, and there's unnamed people in our industry that have done this. Like it takes time. And it does. It does take time for SEO really to kick in because there's so much going on on the backside that the crawlers have to find it. You know, it may be a week or two even before the crawlers can find what these changes are being made. And that constantness has to build it up. But the problem is, in SEO, is that you may be weeks slash months away from seeing results. There was a particular company, and a lot of you probably have known or heard of them, but their big thing was it's going to take six months for you to see any action from this SEO. We have to do it. And you do have to stay regular with it. But after six months, people, a lot of people, a lot of the larger percentage of people would be like, nothing's changed. I knew somebody was paying like $1,200 a month to this particular company and nothing changed. After a year, because every time they complain, they would like give them a free month and then they would just keep going with it. And nothing ever happened. Nothing ever changed. It never made a significant change. That's why people hate SEO companies. That's why they're scared of SEO companies, right? Because there's been such garbage companies out there in the past. So find yourself a good one. But it's so important to do it. Like if I could spend $250 a month, which some of you, especially if you're new, you're like, oh, that's so much money. That's so much money. But if I could spend $250 plus $500, $1,000, If every dollar I spend, I make back $2, I would put a million dollars in there because I'd have $2 million worth of work, right? So $250 or whatever that price is, and you got to check your own area, what the company's different prices and things like that. I'm not aware of your pricing. But spending money on SEO will return that back amazingly. In one month's time, say you have $250, say you have $300, your average ticket's probably $300. You got to sell one new job a month from SEO. And the website will be your number one way of paid advertisement, always. Yes, referrals are free. That's number one always. But paid advertisement, SEO, your website will always bring in more customers. It reaches more people. And that customer that you get covered you maybe for that month, but now you're going to have them every three months, every six months for the next 10 years. That's how you build this empire you're trying to do. So SEO the heck out of it. Do not... Slack on SEO. SEO is going to be the most important thing that you could possibly do for your company. And find a good company for gosh sakes. Find a good company. Don't skimp out. This is not something where some people are like, "Ah, I could save a couple. Don't do that. Don't save money. SEO is the way to go. Another thing you can add to your company that would make huge differences and changes is guarantees. Now, all of you should have a USP, unique selling point, right? Something that is why somebody hires you over 10 other window cleaning companies with the same price. Why do they hire you? One of those big things is guarantees. I've always had a seven day rain guarantee. I've had it for 15 years. Seven day rain guarantee, people are like, oh man, I couldn't do that. 
in 15 years of having it, I had one person call me back and it was like, they were just like trying to get a free window cleaning. And then when I got there, I was like, okay, which windows are bad? They're like, oh no, they're still looking perfect. But I thought, cause it rained you. And I explained it on the phone, but she tried to think that she could, like I was going to send the crew or something. I don't know. Anyway, with all that being said, guarantees save you from having cancellations, especially in the rain guarantee. But it sets you up. If you're like, hey, we are 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you're not satisfied, you do not pay. That's like, whoa. There's zero risk for trying these people. Because here's the thing. If somebody's not satisfied, you're going to make them satisfied. So if they go, ah, well, that back window's still bad. They're not just going to be like, that back window's got a streak. I'm not paying you deuces, right? And you're not just going to be like, oh, there was a streak. Ah, you got us. All right, well, thanks for trying to... You're going to be like, okay, cool. Well, let me get take care of that streak. The streak is gone, and all of a sudden, yeah, everything's perfect. Cool, you're satisfied? Awesome, here's the bill. It just lets people know that there's no liability for them to try you. That is really, really, really the right comfort level. Seven-day rain guarantee helps with scheduling. It helps with people not wanting to reschedule because it looks like it might rain. Oh, there's a cloud over here. I got to reschedule. That's awful. If you reschedule... I don't make money at that time. I have floater stuff, but I scheduled, I planned on you, right? We don't want people to um, reschedule. Putting it out there that you have 100% satisfaction guarantee, seven-day rain guarantee, you are fully insured, you carry a $2 million aggregate, a $5 million aggregate policy, whatever it is. Put all those out there so they're getting guaranteed that the work will be done and it will be done awesome. Remember, transactions happen if you're comfortable with the transaction, right? If you go in, you're buying a car. We've all heard the story or we've all said the story. You go in, you're buying a car, and the salesperson is just garbage. They're just, ugh. You're like, oh, well, I'm looking at, well, look at this one. And, well, that's like $30,000 over our butt. Yeah, but you got to get this one. It's so much better. Like, oh, look at that one's junk. Look at this. If you're uncomfortable in the situation, a transaction doesn't happen. 90% of the time, some people get pushed into things. 90% of the time, if somebody is pushing or they're making you feel uncomfortable, you're like, yeah, I'm going to think on it. I'm going to, yeah, and you'll leave and you'll be like, what the heck? That person was horrible. That was terrible. It was the worst experience ever. My last vehicle I bought, best experience I've ever had with buying. And I'll tell you why. I went in. Talk to a lady. When I first walked in, there was people I was like, oh, hey, uh, yeah, I'm just looking to talk to somebody. And this lady came out from the side. She's like, oh, I'll take this one. And I was like kind of talking to somebody else. I'm like, oh, man, this is going to be terrible. She walked around, showed us everything, explained some things. I was like, oh, man, this is cool. What's the difference between these two? She's like, oh, let me find out. Get the sheets, you know. Going back and forth is buying a Jeep, right? I'm looking at these two different models. Same model, but different packages, right? She puts it all out there. And she says this uh, towards the end. She goes, you know what? She goes, take this with you. I'm going to print all this stuff up. Take it with you. Let me know what you want to do. Just think on it. We'll, uh, we'll catch back up maybe tomorrow. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. I left and I was like, oh, wow. Okay. That's crazy. That's like really weird. Like, you know, I liked it. Everything was good. She was going to check on some prices for my trade-in. But she let me go. Like, she's like, think on it. We'll figure it out. Her follow-up game was on point, right? She called me, texted me. She's like, hey, just want to follow up with you. Got everything here. Everything's going to work out awesome. I hope you like the vehicle. I hope you got one picked out. And uh, let's schedule come back in. It was the most comfortable situation. I didn't get pushed in anything. I felt like I was the one that was in control, right? When you're comfortable, the transaction happens just like when your customers are comfortable. So all those guarantees put them at ease, makes them comfortable, and allows them to want to buy from you. It's really a simple concept, but really something a lot of people lack in. Another one's your logo. Now, we're never going to be the, the, the scale that a McDonald's is, right? Or a Nike. Nike can take the swoosh, and they can put that on anything and charge you a bunch of money, or they can just show it to you. They show it to you, you go, oh, that's Nike. I know what that is. That's Nike. In window cleaning, none of us, as much as you see your logo in your company every day and you could pick it out, think about it from the other side, right? 
Think about it from the other side. If they just saw your logo, no letters, no writing, or nothing, it's going to be very hard for them to recognize what it is right away. Right? They just don't use this enough. It's not, we're not in the brain enough. But if you logo everything, right? I know a guy whose name is Wesley. He's a pressure washer and runs one of the most epically amazing companies I've ever seen. He has logos on everything. He has custom stickers made that are the size of his surface cleaners. His He wraps his surface cleaners for pressure washing. His trucks are all the exact same. Every truck has the exact same gear at the exact same spot. He has shoes that are dye uh, annealed, whatever it's pronounced. The shoes, custom shoes with his logos on it. Shirts, jackets, any piece of clothing, whatever the outer pieces will always have logos, right? So I always wear an undershirt, right? I always have an undershirt, no logos, obviously, because there's always a piece on that. I have a t-shirt, logoed. Sweatshirts, logoed. Jacket, logoed. Hats, logoed. Every piece that means anytime you're wearing any piece of the uniform, it looks like any other piece. And it is such a great design that you are the exact same image if you're wearing a coat or a shirt or a long sleeve or a hoodie or a t-shirt. When you show up and you look that dialed in, your equipment is that dialed in, your trucks are wrapped, right? Your uh, letterhead, your envelopes, your templates, your um, uh, invoices, your advertisements. Everything is the exact same look, exact same logo. Everything is logoed properly. Your logo does not look like it is an 8-bit, right? All that stuff's done and your logo is amazing. That triggers back to comfort. People look at this. This is a legit company. I told you the story. I won a job solely on the guy not once looked i was doing a demo for fleet cleaning which isn't window cleaning but just just one of those examples giant contract almost a hundred thousand dollar contract and the guy never looked at me i was like well this is a waste of my time Dunny goes yeah you're good i said oh i kind of laughed i said i didn't even think you were watching he goes ah, i really wasn't i know what truck cleaning is i saw you guys pull in i saw your equipment i was like yep these are these are the guys like i sold that job because the equipment looked like i knew what i was doing the image, we jumped out with clean shirts that all looked the same. We were just dialed in. He went, this is a professional company. I'm telling you, as much as you think that you being like the mom, pa, and that's why people hire you, that's not it. They like the, the personality and the, the connection they have with you, but they want you to be professional. They don't want somebody to show up in a vehicle that's all rusted out, dirty. You're wearing some like t-shirt that says, you know, some weird carnival thing, Myrtle Beach 2019 or whatever in, in airbrush, right? They don't want that. They don't feel as comfortable. Then your personality has to make them feel comfortable. If you show up and you look like this is like what you do and what you were born to do and, and you're professional and you take this job seriously, that sells. Logoing everything always comes back to you. And be proud of your logo. If you're not proud of your logo, change. I changed my logo. I did a rebrand probably five years in and it was the longest decision of my life because i'm like man and then i realized you know what people just don't know they just don't know out of the thousands of customers that i had at the time i think i had one person that i can remember actually say something like oh they're you're updating huh that was it it's like, yeah absolutely people want that comfort level and that's what it does if you have that logo and you're proud of that logo and it's on everything it's on everything right and another one that i think you should add to your company that i picked up from a no-name person at a bar at one of these conventions years and years ago was plastic gift cards you've heard us talk about that this is the number one thing that people will talk to me back about first off let me say this i don't have templates personally because I sold that all with my company. He's got all that stuff. But all it was was a simple, looked like a gift card. The back, I even had a black line where the magnet strip is, and it was just printed plastic gift card. If you put the magnet strip on there, they cost a lot more, and we're not using a magnet strip anyway because they're going to be for like 25 bucks or whatever you want to do, $50 maybe even, and you're going to use it the whole thing every time. So you just take them back. So you don't need to do that. But print them up, make them look like that. Even put a signature line looking thing on there if you want. Right? 
Usually there's no signature thing on gift cards, so I didn't put it on. But a gift card is basically what I do is I put $25 on there. Big letters on the front. Gift card, $25. Logo, everything. On the back is my phone number, um, uh, the web address, and then it explains in small print. Uh, this gift card is to be used for services uh, uh, totaling over $25, right? I'll say services over uh, $149 usually is what I put on there too. But you can do it however you want to word it. But what it is is it's basically a coupon. But it's a fancy plastic gift card coupon. Look inside your wallet right now. I guarantee you'll find some kind of um, gift card. Even if there's like nothing on it, you still have it because it's got value. It's cash. Business card, you don't have any business cards on you. Maybe not. I don't even know a lot of people who use business cards anymore. I have business cards. But I've never met anybody who's got my business card on them, right? With plastic gift cards, they come back to you so you reuse them. But you give them away. Anytime I talk to anybody, every service, everything, I'm like, oh, hey, I just threw a couple gift cards in there for you too, just as a thank you. Give them to your friends. I get more gift cards back from new customers. Like, oh, I got this from my friend. And, oh, who's your friend? Oh, it's Doris Schmelzer. I don't know. You're like, whoa, oh, awesome. Tell Doris I said thank you, right? The gift cards get put out there and it's just a coupon. If I'm doing a job for somebody new, I'm going to pay $25 for a lead anyway if I'm using, you know, Home Advisor Service Magic, which is not a thing anymore. Home Advisor Yelp, um, Thumbtack. Like those services like that will charge you for a lead. You're going to pay 25 bucks for a lead anyway, right? So why not do that? If 25 bucks hurts you, by the way, you got to raise your prices. You got to, you got to have cushion for this kind of stuff. But I give the gift cards out to everybody. I buy them in bricks. I buy them in like a thousand batches at a time, thousand sleeves and give them to everybody. They're getting gift cards. They're like, whoa, of course they're going to use them. And when they use them, I get them back. A thousand pieces will last me years because I get them back. I clean them because that's how I am. And then I send them back out with somebody else. It's really, really an awesome theory. It's basically getting new people to try you because they're getting money when they're really getting a coupon. But you get people coupons, they're like, oh yeah, okay. They think, well, the only way a coupon works is if I spend money, right? If you say, ah, oh, 10% off, in their brain, they don't go, ooh, that's a savings of, they go, oh, I have to spend 90% to get the 10% off, right? With gift card, you're saying, hey, I'm giving you $25. Even though it's the same thing in their brain, they're like, 25 bucks? Yeah. Heck yeah, I'll use it. I got free 25 bucks. It's always better to have a dollar amount than a percentage, and plastic gift cards do that. One of the best things I ever learned from my company, as far as new customers, one of the best things. Home shows, trade shows, uh, parades, whatever you're at, you can hand these things out. I give them everybody. Everybody's like, oh my God. Like, if you put out, $25 gift cards, a thousand of them, that's $25,000 in free work. If you are new in business or you are not a big picture person, that's all you look at. What? You give out $25,000 in free work? Uh, yeah. If it brings me in, you know, a million dollars or, you know, $300,000 worth of new work. Yeah, I would. Right? It's the same concept. Same concept. Putting it out there would 100% be, it. I mean, $25 off of like a $250 service is 10%, right? That's $250,000 in new work that would come in on those cards. I'm 100% happier with that money than I am with a couple bucks that I spent to get the people there in the first place. Let other people spread your word. Plastic gift cards are the way to go. If you want plastic gift cards... Again, uh, check with uh, At Cost Printing here. Steve and Jillian, they have those. They can make them up. They're super rad. Um, it's really, really worth it. If you're looking at doing some stuff like that, do it. It's really very, very cool. But if you're putting that order in or some supply order or anything, let me put the order in. Huh? I got a shameless plug twice, right? Uh, let me put that in. My number, a direct 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. So call me, text me. Text me is even better. I'm on the phone all day long. That's what I do, of course. Um, and I'm on chat, by the way, if you guys didn't know. 
jump on the website. I'm on chat uh, Monday and Tuesday for 13 hours each day, Wednesday night, and then uh, the other rest of the shifts are all filled with Austin and Steve. Sorry, Steve-O. Um, super cool dudes. But anyway, 862-312-2026. And yeah, I'm pushing this one hard. If you have not gotten American Window Cleaner Magazine yet, I'm telling you, it's absolutely amazing. What else? What are you going to look at? Facebook when you're on the toilet? No! You're going to look at the American Window Cleaner Magazine. Really, go to awcmag.com and be absolutely amazing. Get it. Get the magazine. Get the stickers. Post pictures. It supports the industry. It supports me. And uh, I want this to be like the biggest thing ever. We're doing absolutely awesome. Uh, the magazine has grown leaps and bounds, tons, but I don't have everybody I want yet. I want to have just, you know, I would like to have 10% of the window cleaners having that magazine. I think that would be absolutely amazing. I just think it's so very, very cool. Um, and I think you would too. So check it out, awcmag.com. Shameless plug's done. Thank you guys so much. Uh, if you do put your orders in with me, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't say it enough. I know it kind of goes, but there's some of you who just always put your orders in with me. Um, and it really does mean a lot. So thank you very much. And I hope you enjoyed your holiday. And uh, yeah, until next week, go add some stuff to your company. But more importantly, go out there and be epic.